Today we're going to do a build and construct on the grow pockets. Now these grow pockets were invented by two ladies in uh, Spring, Texas, um, Sandy and her sister Cindy. Fantastic, it's one of those things, as soon as you see it you think, why didn't I think of that? But anyway, we've been um, dealing with these, we've been growing stuff in them now for probably four or five months and they're really, really running very successfully. But many of our customers who have um, bought the kits from us, you know, the grow kits, are asking just exactly how do we put it together. So today Damo and I are going to demonstrate how to drill the pipe and how to make it work. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay Damo, how long is this bit of pipe? How long have we cut it? Uh, it's 173 and a half centimetres, um, which I think is 68 inches. Yep, for you okay. Americans. Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to come down 15 centimetres or 6 inches. Put a bit of a mark on there. Why are you doing that Damo? Why are you doing that on the end of the pipe? Just to get a start for my template. So yep. that it leaves room for the sprinkler head to sit in there and spin around without bed directly onto the uh, the net pot or the roots. Anyway, look, what we're, what we're trying to demonstrate here is a very clever template that the girls um, at, at Grow Pocket have made. And um, yeah, it, it helps you mark out the whole thing in different layouts that you want to do. But today we're going to do a, what we call a standard layout, which is uh, straight down the pipe, but they're, they're, they're just offset one side and one the other. So Damo's marking the centre point. And mark the bottom of our template as well for when we move down. Okay, so we're going single, so everywhere it says a single, mark a hole. Just put a little cross at the top of the top one there. And then we'll come around, we've just got to roll it over a little. So you can clearly see that mark where it says single. And there's two marks, Damo. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. What's that mean? Yep, the top one is where you'll line your pocket up to. Yep. Let's grab a pocket. You can see the little notch yep. at the top. Mm -hmm. That'll line up to that little spot. And the second one is where you'll actually drill your hole. Actually drill the hole. Boy, that's easy, isn't it? Yeah, it makes it very easy. So we go to the next one now, which is over here. And that will give us the offset effect we want, isn't it? Yep. So the plants aren't crowded. The top one you just need to put a cross in, just to yep. get your line up. Bit of a circle there. So now we move the template down, do we? Because we've yep. got that, we've got that centre mark. Right, so I've got my centre mark there, plus I marked where the bottom of the template was. Yep. So now we'll bring the template back to that line, line our centre mark up. And this end here, we've got no mark there, I but we've marked it yet. I'll yep. mark that now. Center, and then I just carry on and mark my singles again. Got that darn big hat on, mate. Gets yeah. him away. Pretty easy. I mean, they're all colour coded and everything yeah. as well. Which so we're doing the yeah, single yeah. spiral, as it's called. And of course, there are other options. You know, you can double them up or four way. You know, if you're going to have the thing marked all the way around. And will we get one more on this particular? We'll get two. We should get two more. So yeah. Only half of the template. So how many pockets will we get on this one, we'll Damo? Ten on this one. Ten pockets. That's pretty good. A six, basically, just a bit under six foot uh, piece of four inch pipe and we're going to get 10 pockets, grow 10 plants on it. Now that's way better than any of the other systems that are out there. There are other systems out there that only allow you to print, what am I talking about print? There are other systems out there that only allow you to plant into the front of the pipe system or the, you know, the stand pipe system, whatever you want to call it. So you get far fewer plants in the same area. This is pretty darn clever actually. We're not going to get another one, won't we? We've run out of pipe. Well we need to leave a little bit yeah. for our for our water collection system, whatever that might be. Just using a 44 mil uh, hole saw or an inch and three quarter. And every drill hole that I mark, drill a hole. Of 
course we have to stop every now and then and remove the bits that we've cut out. I've got to say, if you're in the USA, Sandy has got a really great little spring device that will kick that piece of PVC out of your hole saw. We don't have them here in Australia. Uh, not that I've been able to find anyway, but if you want to go to greatpockets.com if you're in the USA, and uh, you can get one off Sandy there. Mind you, our hole saw is pretty old. We've had it for donkey's years. Why well, throw away a good thing if it's still working? It's a bit blunt, but that's okay. I think I've the drill's a bit the full. One. one thing I want you to notice is that we have used uh, standard thickness pipe for this job, this four inch pipe, uh, four inch or 100 mil pipe. In the USA you can get what they call thin wall pipe. Wouldn't recommend it actually because it makes your um, towels a little bit flimsy. They're okay but um, for the few dollars extra it costs to buy the, um, the full thickness one, I think it's worth the money. Because these things will last you for donkey's years. Now, Damo, what are you going to do next? What's your next project? Okay, I'm just going to clean up these edges a little bit. Yeah, using so, a bit of, bit of ordinary old coarse sandpaper. Yep, you can use your hands if you want just to take a few of the dags off. And then just get the sandpaper in. Give it a quick little clean up, doesn't take much. Yep. That's all it needs. Oh, that is easy, isn't it? Yeah, very easy. Okay, that's it. So it might be an idea to write in pencil on the top here, this is the top of the tower too, because you can get a bit mixed up later on and do it upside down. Yes, you don't want to glue them up the wrong way. Yeah, so let's get a pencil and mark on that top, just so we know. Right, so it'll come off later on, obviously. Okay, that, that removes any confusion we might have. Even though we've written top there, it's pretty hard to get them back to the front because we've got our little cross on the top there. It has to go that way. You, if you try and look that, you're going to have nothing to line up to anyway, so you'll work it out pretty easy. Now, we're about to start gluing the pockets on and these wonderful devices that, that were invented by the people at Grow Pockets, Sandy and her sister uh, Cindy. Now, these are just the most wonderful invention. And I've just got to say, they're made from PVC, which is a little bit difficult to mould. Now, the reason they've gone to the trouble of making them from PVC is, obviously, in order to glue to a PVC pipe, you need to have a PVC material. Um, we've actually fiddled with them and tried to use other types of adhesives and I tell you it always winds up in disaster. So you're best to, to glue them on or adhere them on with uh, proper PVC cement. Now we're going to show you that process. Now Damo has previously prepared, as they say in the cooking shows, some zip ties here. We haven't got any really big ones today so we're just putting two together so we can zip tie them on to make sure they stay there uh, nice and tightly until the adhesive goes off. Now, um, we're only going to glue one row at a time, you know, go along this row. We're not going to spin the pipe and try and do every alternate one at the same time because it gets a bit awkward. Obviously, if you're making up four or five um, of these towels, or, or if you're a farmer and you're going to make up hundreds of them, you'd kind of set up a bit of a production line to make sure that you got it all right. Okay, so we'll just show you what we do. Okay. Now, a generous application of PVC cement is very important. And you have to be pretty quick with this stuff, as you know, because if you're not, it will uh, go off on you. Now, important to do the bottom part, because if you're going to get any leaks, you'll get them on the bottom half. We use green adhesive here because it's got more filler in it. I'm not sure in the USA if yours is green or if it was. Note, we're lining it up with that little mark on the top. See that? And the little X we had there. There it is. Done. Now, we just tighten our, um, our zip ties up make sure it can't fall off. I mean in theory you could sit there and hold it tight with your hands for you know a few minutes and it wouldn't move but we prefer to do this because then we can move on with the job and we know that it's um, gonna stay there. Obviously it'd be a bit easier if we had one zip tie instead of these um, multiple ones but anyway it's still gonna do the job nice and tight so it holds it down and we get good adhesion. See some of our glue is squeezing out there which uh, from an aesthetic point of view is not real good, but it shows that we've got good contact of adhesive, especially on the bottom half where the water will come out if we haven't done it properly. Okay, great. Okay, let's get the second one done now. 
you can see the process we just set up put our zip ties in there and once again you could set up a production line if you wanted to and of course obviously one zip tie would be better than these two ones but it still gets us out of a jam the magical grow pocket good application of adhesive again particularly around the bottom half personally I'd rather make sure we have too much glue if a bit squeezes out because uh, we've had some haven't we Damo when we first started experimenting where we didn't get them glued properly and believe you me it's a pain in the neck because you've got to go and pull the darn thing apart and start again we don't want any leaks because in aquaponics or hydroponics wherever you're using these uh, to waste water is a terrible sin particularly in a country like Australia or any parts of the world where water is at a premium you just don't want to waste your water and uh, your nutrient rich water at that see that glue squeezing out that's great nice and tight it's good we're lined up on the mark beautifully tight as anything bit of the old tidy up look at that good job great Another way of holding these down is to use sticky tape. You can wrap sticky tape around if you like, if you want to do it that way. But we found it got a bit messy. The sticky tape left residue behind it was a bit of a clean up job. This way using um, zip ties or cable ties, it's pretty easy. And zip ties are pretty cheap anyway, so it's a good way to do it. You can leave them on there for quite a while and just snip them off with a pair of side cutters. Okay, that's one row done. Okay, Damo, one row done. What are we going to do now? Just wait for that to dry a bit because... Um, it's best to so you don't accidentally move them. Yep, although they shouldn't move with the zip ties they on them, really, be. should you they? You can just go straight around if you want. But obviously the first ones are probably actually pretty well fastened now, aren't they, really? They should be. The glue yeah. should have gone off. But we'll leave them there for, a, you know, till we finish the job, eh? Yeah. Because um, it'll work well for us. So here's our second row. Now... I guess people want to see that if we do leave it like that, will it interfere with our next lot of work? It won't, will it? Not overly. It's just the way we've set up our little piece of wood here is probably a little bit close together to allow that pocket to go in, but that sits there okay. Just while you're talking about that, Damo, do you mind lifting it up so the folk can see what we've done? Uh, we've just got two pieces of... Um, we call them 90 by 35 here, or you might call them 2 by 4s in America, and just left them with a gap and just screwed them down to a couple of old saw horses to give us a workbench. So it's a pretty easy thing to do, low cost.
Okay, we've um, allowed about a half an hour for these to dry properly, so we're going to snip the cable ties off now with a pair of cutters, just to get them off. Okay, we'll stand it up now and we'll see what our, the result of our work is. So we've got a nice tower now that is just a, sh a bit short of six foot high and um, looking pretty darn good actually. See, they're all offset. It's going to look really nice. They're well and truly adhes adhered onto the pipe. So looking good. Now we just want to show you how the net pots fit in. So if we take a close up look, you'll see that you can see the hole there and um, the where we've drilled it. So put the net pot in now, Damo. You'll see it's quite a neat fit actually, and it just presses in. Now these are standard uh, two inch or 50 millimeter net pots. Now obviously if you want to use a bit bigger net pot, but maybe yours doesn't fit quite so well, you may need to choose a slightly bigger hole saw. But we like to do it that way. And one thing we've discovered in experimenting with these things over time is that it's actually good to have that little bit of a, a skirt hanging down there because it aids the water in falling down onto the net pot and especially if it actually touches the net pot, then you're sure that the water is actually going to get on there. Mind you, not that we've ever had a problem with that, but we think that this is an improved way of doing it compared with what the way we started. All that remains to be done now is to fit our sprinkler device to our overhead sprinkler system, and it will hang down about like that inside. And we've got the tap here that we can alter the flow rate to get it just right. And the just right flow rate, as we've said in earlier videos, is just so that this rotating head is, is rotating nicely, not going crazy because then you're going to use too much water, uh, but just sprinkling nicely. And this, of course, is a piece of foam which we cut a slot in to fit around. I'll just demonstrate how we do that. So we can come back to here. So we just cut a slot in it. We like to put a little bit of a, so we've got a bit of room for the pipe there, just a bit of fancy high tech cutting there. And that goes around our pipe like this and just make sure it's pretty much central and stops backsplashing because you get a little bit of backsplashing with this arrangement. Um, water will try and splash out the top of the pipe. We don't want to waste any water, especially in places like Australia or the Middle East where water is a scarce thing. Um, and you can adjust the flow like that. That's all there is to it. Look, we've got a lovely tower now, ready to assemble and hang into place. Uh, we just need to talk about the drainage side. You can use a tray to pick it up with if you like. If you've only got one tower, you can hang it directly over your gravel grow bed if you want to, or you can uh, get a trough if you want to, or you'll see how we've set it up with the actually uh, four, four inch or 100 millimeter pipe to collect all the water and take it back to the sump. Simple. Thanks for looking at that and have great fun growing stuff in your vertical grow towers. <laughs>